In the last video, we discussed the comparison and covered the basics of cache expiration, eviction, and invalidation. And in this video, we will start focusing on individual concepts. So we will be focusing on cache expiration. Here we see three different policies for cache expiration, and we are going to cover these three in this video, which is time-based, idle time-based, and version-based. So let's start with the first one, which is time-based cache expiration. In time-based cache expiration, we know data is considered valid only for a specific time duration. In this approach, we generally use a timestamp or a TTL property, which is time to live value. So we associate a timestamp or a TTL value with each cache entry. And when we read the data from the cache, we check the TTL value first. If the TTL value is fine within the range, then all good. But if the TTL value or the timestamp has exceeded the defined time that was configured, then the entry is considered a stale entry. The time-based expiration can be used to implement many use cases. For instance, let's say we are dealing with weather forecast data, which doesn't change very frequently. So this data can be cached with a sensible TTL. Let's say a TTL of 60 minutes. That means the weather forecast for a region will be considered fresh for 60 minutes and after that it will be considered as a stale entry. Similarly, we can cache news articles or feeds with a TTL value. Similarly, stock prices which change pretty often can be cached with a TTL value of let's say a few minutes. And another example would be user sessions. So let's say when we manage the user session with a TTL, it ensures that the user session is valid only for a specific duration of time that can be used to secure the user activity. Next, we will see a pseudocode to better understand the time-based expiration. Please note, this is not a complete code. This is only a pseudocode. So here we have a class cache entry, which represents a data entry in the cache. And this cache entry class has three attributes, the actual data, the timestamp, and the TTL, time to live property. So when we create a new entry in order to add it to the cache, what we do, we set the data, then we set the current timestamp when we created this entry and the TTL value. So it could be 60 minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it is, depending on the use case. But the important thing is here in the cache entry, we have two important values. Number one, the timestamp, which represents the current time when this entry was created and a fixed TTL. All right. Then we have the cache.java class, which represents the caching layer that client uses to get the data to read the data from the cache and this is using a source which is a simple class but in real life it represents the original data source it could be the database or any api but for the sake of example i mean this is a simple class which has a simple field data representing the original data source now when the client calls the get method it expects a cache entry in return a data if it is a cache hit so let's say it got the cache entry, but before it returns the entry or the data back to the user, it checks if the TTL is valid and it can do so by taking the current time when the user called the get method and it already has the timestamp in the entry, which was saved when the entry was created. So what it is doing in this sample, it is basically calculating the difference of the current timestamp and the original timestamp of that entry. And if the difference is greater than TTL, then it means the data has expired, the threshold has breached. And in that case, we call the refresh, that means we refresh the entry. And in the refresh method, what we can do, we get the data from the source, we update the data, and we also update the timestamp. Now, the updated timestamp is this timestamp when the refresh happened. All right. So, in this way, we can implement a TTL based policy. And this can be used to check whether an entry is up to date or we need to expire the entry and refresh the entry from the original source. So talking about the scenarios, when should we use time based cache expiration? Well, this approach is preferable with a data set that changes predictably or at regular intervals. So for example, anything that we know will be updated every 60 minutes. So we can set a TTL of let's say 50 minutes or 55 minutes because here we know the frequency of updates or the interval when the data is changing. It is also suitable for scenarios where the freshness of the data, which is in the cache, is critical, but staleness is also acceptable within a defined time frame. Because note that in the time-based expiration, when we are using TTL, 
the item will expire as per defined by the TTL. So if the data changes before the TTL is expired, there will be a brief amount of time when the entry or the read will be stale. So important thing is, although we care about the freshness, but staleness is acceptable. In those scenarios, we can use TTL based or time based expiration. So it's important to select the TTL values based on the nature of the data, the expected frequency of updates, and the balance that we want to maintain between the freshness of the data and the performance. Another important thing that we should take care of is handling the time zone. Because here we are dealing with the timestamp and the calculation of time to live properties, we do a lot of comparison. So we need to make sure that we are handling the time zone related calculations correctly so that it doesn't mess up the calculation of expiration. In a nutshell, this approach is useful in scenarios where we have predictable data changes or changes which are happening at regular intervals and it's also acceptable for the data to be a little stale within a specified duration of time.